Previously on the Traveling Together Journal, we splashed around in Lake Apoyo with our travel buddies Warwick and Ivana, then we all headed over to Volcano Messiah to see the bubbling crater of lava. We learned that trochones are delicious, then we got back off the tourist track to look for some surf. Good morning guys. It has been 266 days of travel for Matt, Jagger, and I. And we are in Nicaragua on Playa Popoyo. Uh, our friends Warwick and Ivana joined us again a couple nights ago. And we've just been kind of hanging out, doing some beach walks. And the guys went surfing yesterday. Now we are going to pack up and head to the island of Opatempe. Um, I'm really excited about this. Uh, but before we do that, we have to go into Rivas and hopefully get our tire fixed. While we were uh, doing some four wheel driving in the refugio just north of here, we got a hole in our tire and noticed that it was going flat while we were here. So hopefully it's a cheap, easy fix. like this guy is a no-go. We thought maybe with all these tires, this would be a good spot. Reparar? Llantas? No. Hola! Buenos uh, Reparar llantas? Claro. Si? Okay. So not only was that guy like super speedy, we were there maybe 10 minutes, but it only cost us 80 Cordoba, which is about $2.50. And now we're gonna get some petrol uh, filling up because there is one gas station on the island of Opatempe, but we've heard it's very expensive. Uh, same, typically, bleh, same typically goes for food and alcohol, so we're gonna head over to the Maxi Poly and stock up. And we're kinda hoping we just run into our friends there, cause that would be the easiest thing. Rapido, rapido to get us to buy our tickets and get on this ferry because it leaves at 12. We're super lucky. There's tons of reviews about how you need to get uh, your reservation like the day before. And we scored. Although I don't know, maybe work's not gonna make it on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Well, almost on. Work's vehicle didn't quite fit, so they couldn't raise the loading ramp. But the crew seemed to think it'd be fine, so we went with it. We were here in late March, which is the driest and windiest time of year. It makes for nice dry roads and sunny days, but it also means that the jungle isn't quite as lush, the campsites tend to be dusty, and in this case, the ferry ride was pretty choppy. But even with the conditions, it only took a little bit more than an hour to make the 10 mile crossing over to Port Moyogalpa. And we passed the time by meeting other travelers like this guy, who was riding his motorcycle all the way from Canada to Argentina. Driving off the ferry at Moyagalpa was a bit hectic, with lots of people in the narrow streets offering transportation, lodging, and activities to all the new arrivals, or just waiting for us to get out of the way so that they could get on the ferry and head back to Rivas. In any case, the crowds were quickly behind us, and we were cruising along on a nice paved rural road. Isla Ometepe was created by two volcanoes. Concepcion is the active volcano to the north, and Madaris is the extinct volcano to the south. Because Madaris has been extinct for a long time, the volcanic rock and ash has been able to develop into fertile soil that now supports the diverse rainforest on its steep slopes. And that is the part of the island that we are going to go explore. So we just drove over to the other side of the island and we're going to go do a hike to San Ramon Waterfall. We followed our friends out here, but they've decided that they would rather go kayaking to go check out a little monkey island. And we decided we wanted to do the hike, so we've actually just split up now. And we'll at least catch up with them uh, next week for the Overlanders meeting, but I bet we run into them before not too long. All right, we made it up to the parking area. It was super cool that uh, if you have four wheel drive, you can drive right up here, which is about cuts out half of the hiking. And then from what we've read, the next bit of hiking is not nearly as steep or rugged as the part that we just drove up. So that's really great because I am still suffering from my ankle injury. And, you know, Jagger's not really doing big hikes so I think that this amount of hike that we're gonna do today is gonna probably push him to his limits so it's nice to be able to still come and enjoy this place that neither one of us would have been really capable of enjoying right now if we couldn't have drove up here go little blue beauty and Matt his excellent driving skills <laughs> All these ants. You see all these beetles running away from them? Like this one right here. Oh yeah. That's crazy. I wonder if enough ants attack a beetle. You can take it down. Ah! Wow, that's insane. Alright, before I'm hunted, let's go. Oh! <laughs> I think I'm gonna end up with a sore neck looking for monkeys and sloths and stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> Check out this cool butterfly. I'll get him. I'll get him, Amy. Jaggies, this was a little too hard for him. <laughs> There's a monkey right there. Hi, monkeys. Hi, monkeys. Oh, it's cool. I do want to say, guys, that when we read the guidebook, it said that this part of the trail was relatively flat. So we thought that it was a good hike to take Jags on and realizing it's a little too much for him. So 
Mark's yeah. Out of boy. Crash volcanic filter. Matt is definitely going to have to continue to carry him a little bit further. really beautiful. Hey guys! Oh, Jaggy's gonna love getting in that water. Lay down, buddy! Jagger fared a lot better on the way down and I'm really grateful that Matt is capable of carrying Jagger like he does and because of that I'm really grateful that we were able to take him um, keeping him active and kind of pushing him a little bit is just what's gonna keep him going so and him getting to go on the adventures it's all the difference for him too he really does enjoy them uh, but I do think he was looking forward to getting back to the truck uh, we decided to give him his evening pain pill that we give him every day a few hours early. A little hot dog snack for doing such a good job. Help with that inflammation. And we're just going to make our way back down the hill. We're going to stop at uh, Hacienda Merida, I think, Merida. It's just down the road from the entrance to the park here. And our friends work in Havana. We're going to go kayaking to the Monkey Island. So we're gonna see if they're still there and see if that's a place we wanna stay the night or continue on. We arrived at Hacienda Merida to find a small hotel surrounded by well-kept trees and beautiful flower gardens, and we joined our friends who were already set up camping on the grass lawn. Then enjoyed a spectacular sunset looking out past Volcan Concepcion over Lake Nicaragua. The next morning, Amy made sure that we were well fueled for the day's adventures with a couple of big breakfast sandwiches. Then we set out across the island with Warwick and Havana to go swimming in El Ojo de Agua, a natural spring that has been surrounded by concrete to create a series of incredibly clear freshwater swimming pools. Feeling refreshed and ready for more, we got back in our cars and headed back across the island to visit the Parque Ecologico Charco Verde and their Mariposa Rio or Butterfly Garden. In addition to being a beautiful, peaceful garden full of butterflies, the Mariposa Rio also has informative signage to help visitors better understand the life cycles and behaviors of these colorful insects. From the Mariposa Rio, we begin the one and a half hour loop trail that took us around the Charco Verde Lagoon and up a steep hill on the water's edge to the El Mirador del Diablo, or Devil's Lookout, where we had excellent views of Lake Nicaragua and Volcan Madeiras. Then we descended back down to the black sand beach where we cooled our feet before finishing our hike. It's been fun, but it's time to go. Uh, Matt and I last night went and tried to buy tickets for our ferry, 
We were successful in making a reservation, but unfortunately not until two o'clock in the afternoon. Everything was completely booked. So we are happy that we did go in yesterday to make the reservation. We arrived at the port in Moyagalpa and checked in nice and early to make sure we didn't lose our spot. Then we loaded up the trucks on the ferry and enjoyed a relatively smooth ride back to Rivas. The Ometepe ferries run on a pretty reliable schedule and cost us 50 Cordoba per a person and 420 Cordoba for the car each way, plus a one-time 80 Cordoba tax for the car, or approximately 35 US dollars round trip. We are headed right now to a place called Monte Verde Hotel and we've scheduled a little overlanders meeting um, with our friends Warwick and Ivana. We kind of went in on telling all social media, Pan American Travelers Association, etc. that we wanted to have this meeting and we've got a bunch of other overlanders showing up which is really cool and exciting. With a nice group of travelers all managing to be at the same place at the same time for a night or two, we considered our overlanders meet up a success. Information and stories were shared, vehicles were ogled, and a good time was had by all. But then it was time for us to go our separate ways. Warwick and Ivana crossed the border south into Costa Rica while we headed west back to the coast with some new friends in tow. Pete, Natasha, and Dog Malta decided to join us for some fun in the sun at Playa Madeiras. Next time on the Traveling Together Journal, we go on a bureaucratic adventure jam-packed with waiting, paperwork, and police when we attempt to extend our tourist visas in Nicaragua. Then it's back out on the trails in search of uncrowded surf and remote beaches.